Hello everybody, welcome to today's lab of Azure Labs. So, today we're going to be creating multiple subnets in Azure, doing some virtual networking, some network security groups, it's going to be fun. So the first thing we're going to do is log into the portal and create a resource group. So right here, we can create a brand new resource group. Name it anything you want. So test, I'm just going to name it test. Or actually, let's get creative. Let's do Budapest. It's created. Go ahead and create a storage account. We'll be using the Budapest resource group. Storage account name, Buddha Storage. Next, we're going to go under Virtual Networks. Create a new virtual network under Budapest called Buddha VNet. Now that our virtual network has been created, after this deployment, and there you go, now that our virtual machine has been created, we can go to the resource, we can go under subnets, and we have a default subnet here. So, what we're going to do is change this address range to 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Oh, and it's not going to work because we have to go to address space. Not, I was in the wrong one. So we'll do 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Hit save. So we're going to have to take this and delete it. So delete the subnet that's in the default. Go back to address space and change it to 192.168.0.0 slash 16. We'll save that. Go under subnets. We'll create 192. Subnet 1 will be the name. And we'll put in 1.0. Save. Gonna add a second subnet called subnet2 and we'll just change this to 2. Next we're gonna go under network security groups. We're gonna add a new one. Our resource group is of course Budapest. So it's going to be Buddha NSG. Hit create. We're going to go ahead and create a rule. So 192.168.2.0 slash 24. Any destination we're going to deny all access and we're going to name it block subnet2 we're going to go into outbound security rules and we're going to create the same kind of rule so 192.168.1.0 slash 24 because this is where it's going to come out of then we'll put it to destination IP address 192.168.2.0 slash 24. So anything going from the first subnet to the second subnet, it's also just going to be blocked. So we're going to name it block subnet 2 out for outbound.
Now we're going to go to virtual machines and we're going to create two VMs. Under Budapest, virtual machine is going to be called B Buda VM1. And we'll go ahead and use the Ubuntu server. By the way, for the Ubuntu server, we cannot RDP into it unless that we set it up through SSH. If you don't know how to do that, I just posted another video right before this one. Go check that one out. If you don't want to worry about that, you can go ahead and create a Windows Server VM. But for this lab, we're just going to be using SSH to ping the other subnet. So Ubuntu Server set up. And we're not going to hit create yet because there's going to be a slight change. Under networking, make sure that the NIC network security group is put to none because we're going to add it later. If we put it to basic, sometimes it might just auto assign itself to a different network security group. So if we just put it to none, it's just easier and quicker to manage that way. So let's go review and create. As this VM is creating, we can go ahead and create the second one. Go ahead and click create. Here it's asking to generate a new key pair. Hit download and make sure you save this somewhere where you're not going to lose it. For me, I'm going to put it to my desktop because we all know we don't lose anything on our desktop, right? While this is deploying, we can go back into virtual machines to create our second virtual machine. Again, the resource group is Budapest. Our virtual machine is Buda VM2. Select none for network security group. Hit review and create. Make sure you also save this key pair. Let's move that one to the desktop as well so we can lose it later. Now, while the second one's deploying, let's go into the first virtual machine. We're going to go under networking and we're going to assign this network interface to the first subnet. So go under IP configurations and it's already under the first subnet. So that's awesome. So now, hold on, where, where did I just go? I got lost. Go back. <laughs> so now we just got to go under network interface, go under network security group, hit edit. And this is the network. Okay, go back to the virtual machine. Go to network security group, edit. And from here, you can select Buddha. So, okay, let's do that again so we're not confused. Go back to the virtual machine, go to networking, go to the network interface. Go to the network security group, hit edit, click this where it says none, then add the Budapest, hit save. That's going to save. Now we can go back into the second VM, which is probably up now, and it is. Let's go to networking, network interface, go to the IP configurations. Let's add this one to subnet 2 and hit save. Once it's saved, we can also add this one to the network security group. Hit edit, put it to Budape Budapest NSG, hit save. Try it again because it failed. Not sure why it failed. Sometimes it just fails. Um, it says it fails again, but let's try. It said it failed, but it did add it. So sometimes it just does that. So as you can see, 
if we go to connect, we're not going to be able to SSH into it anyways, because we did not add the rule to add inbound port rules. So we got to go under here and add the SSH rule. Hit allow and do allow SSH. Now we can go back to our first VM, go under connect, SSH, and we should be able to connect to this. So let's go to our desktop, and here we have the two keys that we're going to lose later. And don't actually lose them. If you're in a production environment, these better be somewhere secure. You better keep track of them. So we're going to use PuTTY Key Generator and we're going to load the Buddha VM1 key. So go to all files to detect it. It's a PEM file. Successfully imported. OK. We're going to save this private key. You can put a passphrase on it if you want, but you know, this is just a quick lap. So Buddha VM1 private key. Hit save. We're going to open up PuTTY. Go to SSH auth browse and put that right there we're gonna copy this no we're not gonna copy it don't copy it and then we're gonna copy this from our Buddha VM1 and put it into session hit open it's gonna ask you a big long message and say yes and we're in our machine. So now, so now we're gonna go ahead and ping the other computer and the other subnet. So we're gonna go to Buda, VM2, networking, and here we can see that IP is gonna be 192.168.2.4, and of course we gotta echo 192.168.2.4. Not echo. Ping. So it's going to ping it for a bit. We can do control C to cancel it. So we had seven pings and they were all lost because we're blocking any communication between those two subnets. So anyways, that's all I have for today's lab and I'm hoping that you all follow along, hoping that you all gathered some valuable information here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these virtual machines. So I'm going to stop them all. I got a little notification. So now that all of our virtual machines are stopped, we can go ahead and hit delete. Type yes. Once it goes through that, you shouldn't be charged any money, you shouldn't be charged any fees because we didn't really use it that much. And if you do get charged anything, you can always open up a dispute ticket or a help ticket, support ticket, whatever you want to call it, Microsoft. And if you say that it was for learning purposes, they will refund you for it. I've gone through this before where I've been charged quite a bit of money. And you know, as long as you put in a support ticket, explain that you can use for labs and for learning. That it's a learning platform, and they're, they're always really good about refunding. So don't be too worried. Even if you do get charged, you can they'll refund you. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's lab. Hope you guys really hang out, learn something. And as always, I'll see you on the next.